is up guys and welcome back to the channel so we got a different change of pace going on here this is obviously after our dyno day um, we are en route to Wagler Motorsports Park in Lyons Indiana for Shy Diesel Extravaganza 2023 and it ought to be a great time uh, and I say it's a change of pace because we are driving the first gen there it's about I thought it was a three to three and a half hour drive it's definitely like four hours I looked down after I got past Indy and there's still like an hour and a half left or an hour and 45 minutes left so uh, we're chugging along, we're cruising like 75, just taking our time. We went ahead and left a little bit earlier than landing so I could get a bit of a head start. Um, I was, I don't know, I don't, I don't want to run 80 to 85 the whole way. So I just figured I'd get out and start going. And if he catches me, which he probably will, um, then he catches me. But our ETA is about 11 o'clock here on Friday. I think driver's meeting might be at 10.30, so we might miss that. but. We're gonna get down there, get parked next to Evan, set our stuff up. We've got some shirts and I got some decals. So if you guys are wanting anything, definitely stop on by. I'm gonna try and get this video maybe posted today and, and see if maybe Saturday if people wanna stop by and grab some stuff, they're more than welcome to. But the truck's doing good. Um, this last tank of fuel, a bunch of people have asked how it does on fuel mileage and how streetable it is. Obviously it's very, very streetable, but this last tank I got 17.8 miles a gallon on that half tank that was about 12 dyno wax and four of those wax were above a thousand horsepower and then just a bunch of in town driving no highway miles so I've been pretty happy with it I'm pretty excited to see how it does on this on this little trip here as far as fuel mileage goes because people keep asking me like they expect a they think like a, a you put a comp VE pump on and all of a sudden you're you got the equivalent of a 13 mil plus V pump and you lose all your street ability and all your everything but this thing just drives like a stock truck would right up until you get into it and then it pours it in so i'm gonna keep on trucking along i've got about an hour left about 50 miles it's pretty windy roads and stuff so i'm gonna get off here and i hope to see you guys at shide all right guys so i had to stop in spencer uh to go by autozone to grab some parts for some guys at the track and I, I grabbed some diesel because there's nothing out by the track and I wanted to be at full weight whenever we get to the track so I know what how to shim this thing. But I filled up and I believe it was 234 miles we put on and it used 11.7 gallons. I filled up last night to where it overflowed and I filled up today to where it was puking out of the tank. And yeah, that's what it used. If you guys do quick math, I believe 234 miles is right. I sent it to all my buddies on Snapchat because I was shocked. But that is 20 and a half miles per gallon. That is daily status right there, folks. I am thrilled. Uh, just goes to show some really good parts can yield really good results, especially on a VE truck. That is better than my OBS gets for my long shot, like five miles a gallon. But obviously it's gonna be less this tank because I'm gonna be racing it but still should be around that 17 mile per gallon mark yeah i'm i'm stoked all right guys i don't know if anybody filmed that last run but me and evan are out here um he went what an 830 yeah 830 830 first rip i went an 80 809 at 88 so i'll tell you guys how we got to that um, basically we put a little bit of shim on the fuel pin to keep it from traveling as far as well as I don't have a KSB that is active right now. And I only left on 10, 10 pounds of boost, which turns out is not enough because it was not on the charger enough coming out of the hole. It came out smoky and then came on top of it. So I'm gonna leave, I'm gonna go to 20 because I really think that's just my comfortable spot. I'm gonna go to 20 and see what it runs uh, with everything the same and see if that little shim will pull enough fuel out of it to get it to run a 770. As you guys know, we've been running a low sevens like seven ones anywhere in there it's been pretty consistent a seven one seven two so we got to slow it down granted it is very hot today but um first pass out an 80 pretty solid um at 88 which is faster than what i was running where i was running eight whenever i was running seven eighties so i think the mile an hour is gonna be about spot on if we can just get the et there we're gonna be good i'm gonna try and have somebody film this next pass for you guys i'm pulling the log right now to see what rpm it's shifting at and we're gonna let her cool down and then go back up for another test and tune pass.
lots of cool shit out here at Shad this year. Brett just ran a truck, went 755. I was sprinting up there, did not get it on camera, but that was on tune one trying to slow it down because it's a 670 truck, really. 75 easily, or 755 easily, that's pretty good stuff. Um, I don't know, we got the first gen to go 785 that last pass and it's hot and I hot lapped it, so I think we're gonna be in that 770 range. I might tighten the gate a little bit because the Atmo charger is pissed. It seems like it's surging a little bit, but uh, yeah, it's been a fun, fun day so far.
Who do we have here? We have the world famous Gavin, king of VEs. It's like the fastest of the shore bus, but it's still pretty cool. <laughs> Alright guys, I didn't get to talk much at Shide, um, basically just had a bunch of films, so I'd like to go over how we did, and just kind of a uh, weekend recap, which will be honestly pretty pretty simple. So, as you guys know, last time we were out at the track, um, this is one of the time slips, but get this focused, come on. Um, 716, 714, pretty consistent around there. Just pretty consistent around 96 miles an hour. So obviously way too fast for our 770 index racing. So coming into the weekend, it was weird having a truck that I knew was way too fast for the index because usually I'm doing everything I can to get that 77 number. But now it's picked up enough that that's not the case. So I drove the truck out to Shide, as you guys saw, on the street tires, and that's all I brought with me. And it ended up, I don't know, kind of realizing that maybe I should race it on the Hoosiers. Uh, everywhere else I've went, I've had no problems on the street tires. Actually, my best times and best 60 foot so far have been on the street tires. So I'm a little bit puzzled there because this weekend was not the case. Uh, the track was, I, I just don't know how to describe it. It was my first time experience what I did or experiencing what I did. So what i basically we we went out uh made some adjustments put some spacers on the fuel pin to pull fuel out of the truck and i think this is one of the first passes with just one spacer Let's see if we can get this thing to zoom sorry it's going to take a minute if you guys aren't interested in a recap you can probably just go ahead and end the video now uh, we went at 755 at 89 so still too fast our 60 foot was a tenth slower than it normally is with a 164. It's usually about a 154 to a 156, even on the street tires. So I was like, eh, if our 60 foot comes back, it's really, we're going to be even, we're going to be down to 74 something. So I really need to pull more fuel because that's just, that ain't going to work. So that is exactly what we did. We went out, next pass. It went, eh, no, that ain't it. We did go a 7.9 somewhere in there with a 1.8, 5.60 foot. It went to crap because it shook really hard off the line. It was just, anytime I was in that right lane, the truck was pissed. It would do some very weird stuff on the front end. Um, left lane, completely fine. It did great. Right lane, I don't know what it was with that lane, but even Evans did something weird. So I'm not sure if it was just a lane issue or what it was, but my in the right lane my 60 foots were absolutely terrible the mile an hour i was shooting for though was there we dropped a mile an hour which is about right where i wanted to be and then let's see if we can find i think my last pass of the day and 
intestine tune was a 785. Our 60 foot got a little bit better. Mile an hour still hanging right around that same range, which I was happy with. I was like, you know what? We're gonna leave it for the next day. Um, we had issues with the atmospheric charger surging that last pass because we pulled so much fuel out of the truck. So I had to tighten up dome pressure. I uh, ended up going from six pounds on the dome up to uh, 16 pounds on the dome and the big charger got a lot happier. It quit surging. So where, there we go. Friday, first round of qualifying, we come out, knock off a 779, puts us in number 13 out of like 28 or something like that, middle of the pack basically, uh, is what we call qualified. So I stuck with that 779 we qualified with the first round. Tried going back out the next round and bettering it, did not work for me. I just kept telling myself if I get that 60 foot back, it'll put me bottom 77s. Seven so I was really content with where the truck was at, very confident. And then, let's see, one of these passes, here it was, uh, first round we drew Dustin Mintern, which it was just random pairing, it is what it is, I, I pull up against Dustin Mintern, he's awesome 770 racer, he does a great job, he's got a full size Duramax. Anyways, like I was saying before I had to stop that clip, um, we raced Dustin Minter in first round. I got myself into the right lane, unfortunately, which is where I had been having problems. As you can see, I got him on the tree. I went a .09 on the light, and I was happy with that. Um, he had a little bit better 60 foot than I did, which is this is the worst 60 foot of my weekend. Go figure. Um, the, it did the weird shaking up front. Uh, it's it's a bummer because fixing that 60 foot would have yielded much, much better results. The mile an hour was right where I wanted it. At the stripe, we were bumper to bumper and honestly, I had no idea who won. Uh, he ended up getting me with a .031 margin of victory. It was a very tight race. It was a very good race. Those were the fun ones. So we had a good time, told him good job. And he moved on to the next round and went on to win the event, which is very good stuff. He struggled with some injector problems on his way down to Shide. So he battled it out through the weekend and came up with the win, so always love to see that. Um, we will be at Waggler's one more time in Lyons, Indiana for the season finale. Uh, it's Waggler's fall event. Uh, them and Rudy switched for fall and spring, so we will be back out there again here next month. Hopefully, uh, maybe if I can find some time, I can maybe do a little bit of testing trying to figure out um, what, how much exactly, how much fuel I can pull out of it without it getting mad, and we're, we'll be testing other things in the meantime. We've got lots of, lots of ideas and stuff to get more out of the truck in general, but we also need to work on dialing it in for 770. Uh, I have a lot of comments this weekend on why I don't just run it in 670 and just turn, let it run it all the way out on fuel, maybe a little bit of nitrous, which it would take some nitrous to do it. Again, I do think it has a 7.0 or a high 6.9 pass in it on fuel with better shift points being adjusted in my anteater tune. So right now it's kind of short shifting. But I just don't want to put a roll bar in the truck. Granted, we have made removable roll bars before, but that would mean something has to be done with the rear glass. And I'm not willing to do that. Um, this truck was never meant to do that. That is why I planned on having a shorty for. So I'm going to continue driving this truck wherever whenever and really enjoying it hopefully i can find some seats that i like with that being said any of you guys that watch my channel if you know where a set of tan captain's chairs are and a tan cat like center console factory first gen center console please call me i don't like i don't care what you do how you get a hold of me comment on here something and let me know i am willing to buy a set I've been having trouble finding, I can find them in gray, red, brand new vinyl that somebody has vinyl color, vinyled them black and yellow or whatever combination you can imagine, but I cannot find tan ones. In fact, I have a set of red ones that I would probably let go if somebody wanted to trade me for a set of tan ones. Um, yeah, I'm just, sorry, that's a random tangent, just looking for a set of seats, so if you know of any, let me know. Um, talk to 
Austin Fields today, or this weekend. He's got a lot of tan interior parts. So I'm gonna be hitting him up and the next time we go to Wagglers, uh, assuming he'll be out there again, I might have him bring me some goodies and do a little exchanging. So we'll see what happens. We had a good weekend with all of our diesel racing family and friends. Uh, Evan helped me with trying to slow the truck down and we successfully did it. So the weekend was not a total bust. We, we proved that some things work, proved that my Atmo charger does not like less fuel, especially opening on gate or just spring pressure pretty much. So lots of different things to test. We are still learning every day and that is the most exciting part about it. So could not do it without the guys at work, Firepunk Diesel, um, Infinite Performance, which is Mr. Weston, and Evan Ratcliffe, Ratman Performance, along with the Air Dog and Hot Shot Secret. We do, we use all their stuff to get to and from all the races and try and have a good time and try to get in the money. This time it didn't happen. We were a little bit more successful at Beach Bend and we were not as successful here. So we'll keep getting better, keep having fun, and keep trying to hold down the fort for the VE crowd and the 770 index. So until next time, I will see you guys. Hopefully you had a good one. Hopefully you guys had a good weekend like I did. But until next time, I'll see you on the old school crew. Peace out.